Now I saw this tweet and it got me thinking because I feel like we should go down the rabbit hole. Now this person says she keeps bringing up Rock Nation, then mentioned the brunch. Girl, tell us why you really mad. And this is in reference to Nicki Minaj and all of the elaborate tweets that she's been putting out for the last couple of days. I really don't like when people who open up doors as black people get shitted on publicly like that. I, I, I just don't like it. I think in that case, what Nikki did was wrong. To bring up Tidal, his streaming company. The person responsible for putting Nicki Minaj in danger was a former employee who had been fired but mysteriously rehired. Nikki revealed in another tweet, I didn't know she was still hired until last night. Look at God. It seems like someone higher up was trying to target Nikki. In response, her fans, the Barbs, started investigating the situation themselves. They discovered a Facebook post from the person who allegedly tried to poison Nikki. The post read, To see Nikki Minaj at Doris Records, her team asked where the best Caribbean spot is, so I sent them to Taste a Soul. Now I bet she won't be sneaky anymore if she eats that plate she'll be performing late tonight. Nikki apologized to her fans, but the big question remains how did this happen, and who allowed it? After Nikki's mysterious question about who the person responsible works for, fans believe they know. One person wrote, Rock Nation working hard. Chi, don't eat nothing but why mention Rock Nation? It's because Nikki has been calling out Jay-Z lately. Back in 2015, when Jay-Z launched his streaming service title, he had artists like Beyonce, Kanye West, and Madonna supporting him, and Nicki Minaj joined too. Some of these artists, including Nicki, were given a stake in the company. However, years later, it seems that Nikki didn't benefit from that deal, which may be fueling her current frustrations. It's shocking because the artists who signed up for Tidal were promised co-ownership and a small share of the profits. However, Nicki Minaj never saw any of that money. She made this clear when a fan commented that everyone with 1.5% ownership got paid. Nikki responded, revealing she didn't earn a cent from the deal with Jay-Z even though she gave title exclusive rights to her music. She said, I didn't even get one red penny, and no one promoted it more than me outside of Beyonce, OOL. Meanwhile, Steve Stout, known as one of Jay-Z's key allies who helps manage his public image, had a few things to say. Dame Dash, a former partner of Jay-Z, recently called out Stout directly, accusing him of controlling the narrative whenever Jay-Z faces criticism for doing Jay's dirty work. Dirty work. I don't know why everybody wants to send certain people. There's certain people that always are defending certain people and talking about me. And I know that they're sent to do it. And Steve Stout's one of those pause, burger face, stupid ass, you know, will do anything anybody tells him for a dollar, hate his culture. And I just want to know who sent you, but you're making it obvious. And why you won't leave me the f alone. After Nicki Minaj called out Jay-Z, Steve Stout quickly stepped in. He appeared on the Pivot podcast and claimed that the reason Nicki didn't get paid was because she never signed the necessary paperwork. This explanation seemed to be his way of defending Jay-Z amid the controversy, suggesting that the lack of payment was due to a missed formality on Nicki's part, rather than any wrongdoing by Jay-Z or Tidal. I really don't like when people who open up doors as black people get shitted on publicly like that. I, I, I just don't like it. I think in that case, what Nikki did was wrong. To bring up Tidal, his streaming company, that he gave you equity in, that you, you know, didn't sign the fucking paperwork, and that's the reason why you left millions of dollars on the table. That man didn't do nothing to you to be talking about somebody who's putting, whether it be Kendrick or Wayne or Drake or Usher, he's putting them on the biggest stage. This is interesting because just a few days ago, Cam'ron and Ma Dollar E revealed that Jay-Z had lied about them not signing any paperwork. It appears that Rock Nation might be using a similar tactic with Nicki Minaj. The situation seems to follow a pattern where artists are being blamed for not signing documents possibly as a way to avoid paying them what they're owed. This pattern raises questions about how Rossi Nation handles business with its artists. It's crazy. Me and you were supposed to be a fanatics. 
The, the week before some Fanatics happens, oh, Cam and Mace didn't sign the contract. <laughs> we banned from Fanatics, but <laughs> who's in Fanatics? <laughs> I'm going to start saying names. <laughs> Yo, it's wild, man. It's wild. <laughs> the hate man. is crazy. Nicki Minaj wasn't going to let an old man take advantage of her. She took to X, revealing her frustrations, saying, I received a call advising that title was sold, and they made no money on the deal, so all they could offer me was a million. But there was more her lawyer informed her that she had just 24 hours to sign the agreement to receive the $1 million, or the offer would be off the table. In response, Nikki referenced her feelings in her song Fractions with lyrics aimed at Jay-Z, trying to eat it up. I said come and get it boo while I count a mill. Jigga what? Jigga what? Jigga who this was her way of clapping back at the situation, showing she wasn't going to settle for less. Nicki Minaj referred to Jay-Z by his old nickname Jigga, which he earned back in 1993, to directly call him out. In another tweet, she thanked her fans for supporting her but revealed that she was scammed and offered $1 million to stay quiet. She declined, stating, the grace of God is sufficient. I didn't need their hush money. Nikki was owed much more, as she had 3% equity in title, but being offered just $1 million was insulting. She also hinted at something bigger, saying, they got to keep the conversation on me so that no one asks about these charges against their BFF for referring to Diddy. It seems like Nikki believes there's a deeper agenda at play, where her situation is being used to distract from the controversies surrounding Diddy. Nicki Minaj called out Steve Stout and others for discussing her instead of addressing more serious issues. One fan joked that they wanted brunch and baby oil. To which Nikki responded, expressing her frustration about people focusing on the drama involving her husband, Kenneth Petty, who was a minor when he faced legal issues. She pointed out the hypocrisy, saying, worried about the tea of a 15-year-old child, but no comments on the tea and baby oil that's been going on for decades, even as recently as months ago. Nikki questioned why the same standards weren't applied to the adults who have been involved in such situations for years, implying that if young people need to be held accountable, then so should the adults who groomed them and remained silent. She added, let's keep the blogs focused on Anika referring to herself, while throwing shade at Diddy, calling him short and stout and suggesting that he doesn't want to talk about his own issues. Nicki Minaj's comments reveal her anger over Jay-Z's friendship with Diddy, indicating there's much more to uncover. She dropped several code names for people she believes are part of Diddy and Jay-Z's inner circle, raising serious questions. She wrote, Dear Short and Stout, Laffy Taffy, Alien, D-Breath, Sass, we want to know if you were present during the mistreatment of teenagers and children. That's what we want to know. Nikki added, you can't taste my blank. Stop Aya, Foxy, etc. our Kelly video shoots. Did you know about the mistreatment of Kim Porter and Cassie? Why all always seem to run in some sort of rat pack? Nikki emphasized that she and her fans want those men to address these serious issues, calling out their selective energy for attacking women online while avoiding confrontation with gangsters in real life. She concluded with a statement challenging any of those four men to step up and discuss these matters. Nicki Minaj is not holding back. She declared, I would like to shoot the fair one with a gangster. I'll put up $10 million for the winner of the fight. Until then, watch that karma spin. She noted that 25 men have spoken out, but they're all focused on her every single day, which makes her feel like she's winning. In another tweet, she continued to target Steve Stout, stating, every day a new man pushing 60 gets blanked and then has to come online and lie on me. God is in control. Bookmark this I'd advise why all to never mention my name again. Nikki is serious about the accusations being thrown at her. She emphasized that if anyone catches her in a lie, they should delete all her music, showing she's ready to risk everything to get back at Jay-Z. And it seems she knows what Jay-Z hates the most, which adds even more tension to their ongoing conflict. Nicki Minaj knows that Jay-Z can't afford to have her revealing his secrets, especially with everything going on with Diddy. Fans speculate that this is why he might have tried to poison her. To be fair, Nicki and Jay-Z have been in conflict behind the scenes for a while. Things escalated for Nicki earlier this year in January, when Megan Thee Stallion threw shade at her in her track Hiss. Nicki lost it writing, B-words think they're bullies because they get a Rock Nation brunch every year, be mad at party he told all your tea. 
but you're taking shots at my family boo. Ha ha, get up on your good foot. She also shared a screenshot of a Rock Nation ad promoting Megan's song Hiss commenting on how much money they were spending on her, while calling Megan the Lil this highlights her frustration with how the industry treats her compared to others. Nicki Minaj addressed Desiree Perez, the Rossi Nation CEO, saying broke independent artist, Desiree, you've got to let it go baby. The world knows she's a CS and can't rap. Stop trying to make fetch happen. She mentioned that she recently released a song with no promotion or video, and it's already at number two on the charts. Nikki suspected that Rock Nation was secretly fueling the beef against her to get back at her. In another tweet, she slammed Desiree, stating, on the next song, I delve into all the people Desiree allegedly fired for unknown reasons. She claimed that many people were blindsided and hurt by her actions, adding, she's willing to go broke trying to replace me. Fix it, Jesus. Nikki also told her fans that the hate train directed at her was actually sponsored by Rock Nation, suggesting a coordinated effort to undermine her in the industry. Point where people got their little $250 for their for they tweet to say something bad about Nicki Minaj. And then the next day it was like, bitch, yeah, it, I, anyway, I'm gone, right? I'm listening to Big Foot. So I don't know why anybody of that and I'm, and I'm not talking about any rapper, I'm talking about a company or companies. Jay-Z wasn't targeting Nicki Minaj just because she was vocal on social media. She became a target after she leaked the freak-off tape involving Meek Mill and Diddy, revealing the truth about their relationship. It turns out that Meek and Diddy weren't just collaborating in the studio, they were also involved in sexual encounters. This revelation came to light when Lil Rod filed a bombshell lawsuit against Diddy, hinting at the people he saw in Diddy's bedroom during these encounters. He didn't hold back in his claims, shedding light on the secretive and scandalous nature of their relationships. Although Lil Rod didn't name names in his lawsuit, the clues he left led fans to speculate about Meek Mill. According to the court documents, Diddy had a relationship with a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. Since Meek is from Philadelphia and was in a relationship with Nicki, the connection was made. Once the truth surfaced, fans began searching online for questionable clips of Meek and Diddy. One notable video surfaced where Diddy calls Meek Daddy further fueling the rumors and suspicions about their relationship. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. Things took an even more surprising turn when a freak-off tape surfaced online, which appeared to show Meek Mill with Diddy. The video quickly began circulating, raising eyebrows due to its explicit content. While we won't play the video here, it's certainly disturbing. Reports suggest that Meek was working hard to secure his place in the industry, but the twist is that the person who filmed and leaked the tape was allegedly Nicki Minaj herself. This revelation adds another layer of drama to the ongoing tensions between them and highlights the complexities of their relationships in the music industry. Since he was a kid. Man, oh. And if milk running the around, talking about expensive pain no. in his ass. Wait, this is Philly you're talking about now. Wait a minute, Jack. F me. Wait a minute. He's a fucking fruit loop. He did he fire. This is Philly. He's a deep fried <laughs> he did he fried. He did he fried. He did did he do our bop. Fuck me. Real rap. You think that audio that they put out was real? Yeah, that was real. <laughs> Nikki put that out to here. That, that Nikki recorded that at the freak off in the Calabasas. That's just and the beginning. When Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill ended their relationship, she accused him of serious mistreatment. In 2020, she took to X, stating, you beat your own sister and taped it, spit on her and taped it, kicked me in front of your mother and sent her to the hospital. Sucking Drake D made you feel tough again. Move on. Reports indicate that Nicki planned to reveal the details of their tumultuous relationship in a documentary she was developing with HBO Max. A press release noted that the six-part series would explore Nicki's brilliantly creative mind and shed light on her personal experiences and struggles, hinting at some shocking revelations about her past with Meek. The documentary about Nicki Minaj's personal and professional journey never materialized, possibly due to interference from Rock Nation and Diddy. At the time, 
Meek Mill was signed to Rock Nation, and they likely wanted to protect one of their own from Nikki's potentially damaging revelations. Reports from insiders suggest that Meek filed a cease and desist order to prevent Nikki from exposing details about their relationship. As a result, Nikki has become a significant source of tension for Jay-Z, especially with the ongoing legal issues surrounding Diddy. Many fans believe that Jay-Z may have attempted to subtly remove her from the equation to avoid further drama. Given the circumstances, there are growing concerns for Nikki's well-being, as fans worry about the lengths to which others might go to silence her. Many fans believe Nikki should take serious measures to ensure her safety. One commenter noted, Nikki is a horrible person, but she should take this ordeal to the police. That person needs to be arrested. They suggested that Nikki report any food tampering incidents and that the individual involved should be investigated. Another commenter mentioned rumors that Jamie Foxx was also poisoned by Diddy, which led to his hospitalization. They recalled that Fox used to record Diddy's parties and speculated whether Diddy instructed him to delete or destroy evidence once the FBI investigation began to heat up. What do you think about the situation? Do you believe Nikki was really poisoned? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below.